Having now defined some key terms, let's start to apply them by talking first of all about malware. Now, there are seven different types of malware you need to know about, so we've got a lot to cover. Let's just quickly race through some background because possibly we've even spoken about this before uh, so far in this course. So software is a set of instructions which tell a computer how to work. And if we're wanting to make software, we will program the computer by writing some code. And behind the scenes, all of this code, like this is Python code, will be translated, will be converted to binary code, to zeros and ones, because only because a computer can only process, can only execute data which is in binary form. And the word, another word for processing which is really important is execution, or executing the data. So this is processing it or carrying out the instructions written inside the software. So this software is being executed by a device called the processor or the CPU as it's also called. This is a hardware device. So the hardware is the physical components, the monitor, the hard drive, the graphics card and the CPU over here, which actually are, are running the instructions which are written in software. That is more background knowledge, but what we do need to know is what malware is. So malware is a portmanteau, which means a, a combination of two words. Of malicious and software so we've got the mal from malicious and the where from software malware malicious software so as a definition malware is a type of software which is hostile or intrusive so software is a category and malware is a subcategory of software so i've said hostile or intrusive let's break apart both of those words first of all hostile means it does some damage to our computer so for example this is a screen from ransomware so it says you are hacked all of your files have been encrypted and this is being a, this is malware of course, but it's got some hostile act. So it's being hostile, it's damaging our computer in some way by encrypting all of our files. But it can also just be intrusive. So intrusive usually means that it's getting in your way and invade your privacy. And that can mean it's just annoying. So for example, this is adware. As we'll talk about adware can usually be more annoying than harmful. You know, you've got loads of pop-up pop ads you can't close straight away. It's quite annoying, but it's not necessarily hostile right so malware can be either hostile or intrusive and a virus is a uh, our first type of malware out of seven and this works by inserting itself into other computer programs so as we said earlier software is just program code written by a human and so this on our left is our virus again just a bunch of code and this is microsoft word which is just a normal program just software not malware and again, this is just loads of code. And it works by, or viruses work by inserting the virus code inside the code of your normal program. So inside Microsoft Word now, we've got some virus code along with the normal word processing code. And using the proper terminology, we would describe Microsoft Word as being the host program for this virus. So Word is hosting the code for the virus. And because the virus is inside our host, it means when you run your host program, once you open Microsoft Word, the virus code will also be executed too. So the virus gets executed, gets run, which is bad for us because your host is running as well. And when the virus executes, the virus will start to replicate itself and spread into other programs on your computer. So the virus inside Microsoft Word will copy its code and put that code into other programs, which will also become a host for the virus. Okay, so our second type of malware is a worm. And a worm is different to a virus in a one key way in that a worm does not need to have a host program. It can be standalone. It can be on its own. So before we'd have, say, a .exe file, an executable file for, say, Microsoft Word, and the virus would go inside that file. But now it can have a .exe file on its own. It doesn't need to have a host program. So that's the key difference, but worms are similar to viruses in that they can also replicate very quickly. It's how the malware can spread by copying itself, and in this case, copying itself into other standalone programs, not inside other programs. So a worm can spread just on one single computer, but network worms are the most common, which means they can spread over networks and slow the networks down. So networks are groups of computers which are connected, and network worms will replicate over the network. So it will go from one computer to another computer in the same network and spread from there. And the consequence, because they replicate very quickly, they can really slow down the network. The more and more traffic which goes via the computers, the slower the network will become because it will become overwhelmed. And so if you spread and send messages via the network really, really quickly, that will slow down the network and it can, can become unusable. A virus will usually stick to just one computer, so it won't spread over a network. Trojan horses are another common type of malware, which is often shortened to just Trojans. So a Trojan is a bit of software which is disguised as a useful program, but actually contains some malicious code. 
The name comes from an ancient Greek story about how soldiers who wanted to attack a well-protected city built a massive wooden horse and gave it to the city as a gift. And so the city thought, wow, they've received a gift. And so they brought in the massive horse and left it there. But inside the horse were loads of soldiers who were hidden. And at night time when everyone was asleep, they came out and attacked the city. So it seemed like a gift, but actually it was uh, more malicious than they thought, which is why Trojans have taken this name. So you install some perfectly nice looking software, it looks great. And then eventually the Trojan malicious code will kick in and start to attack you. So it may kick in straight away or it may take several months even of normal use before the malicious stuff starts to happen. So for example, right, a calculator is a fairly uh, innocent bit of software. It's useful to us. You might download and install a calculator application and it acts normal, it works like a normal calculator, but actually after a few weeks maybe, the Trojan code starts to activate and starts to maybe spy on you. A Trojan can often be combined with other types of malware. But what is different about Trojan, usually to viruses and worms, are that normally Trojans can't self-replicate. Usually a Trojan won't try and spawn loads of different calculator apps on your computer. Usually it'll just be one application, one bit of software, which is infected and it won't try to self-replicate, whereas the other two will. Another common feature in a lot of Trojan horses, not all of them, but a lot of them, is that they may provide a backdoor to an attacker. And a backdoor means some other way of bypassing your normal security. So you've got a normal way of using your computer, like your front door, in other words. But a backdoor provides access to an attacker via some other method, i.e. via this Trojan. So we'll talk about how bot, um, botnets can be used by attackers in a future video, but maybe a Trojan could provide a backdoor allowing some remote access.